What's up guys, this is John from Heavy Set Tactical and today I have a view, uh, knife review for you guys. And this is something that I am somewhat passionate about. Um, you know, I'm passionate about most of my knives, but this is a knife that I received uh, for my birthday in the mail. And I am kind of blown away at its quality and its make. Now... This is the Topps Bob Brothers of Bushcraft. The Topps Fieldcraft by the Brothers of Bushcraft, a.k.a. the Topps Bob. And this version is, you know, they have most of the color options in 1095, but this is their, you know, their stainless 154cm version. Um... There, I have a lot to say about this knife, and I'm going to try to keep the video semi-brief. I, I, I've put a decent amount of use on this video. Or I, on this video. I've put a decent amount of use on this knife. And, um, again, I, I, I'm one of those guys where I like simple. I like durable. Uh, I like good wear resistance. I like thick stock. The, uh, the you know the jimping's a little aggressive. I'll get to that, but let me let me run through some some specs first, and then I'll get to it. But I like functional tools. I like functional knives, and this is just about the most sturdy, hard use, um, kind of able to take on any freaking job you got for it knife. And I say that with the utmost respect. The last couple tops knives that I've had. Um, you know, I had a Topps uh, uh, Operator 7, I've had the Topps uh, Eagle, I've had the, the Steel Eagle, Eagle Steel, Steel Eagle, I've had the Topps uh, Zabo Express, I really liked the Zabo Express and it got great ratings, but I don't like 1095 anymore, uh, you know, and I just think there's so many better options out there, so again, I'm going to run through some specs, tell you what I think, and, and we're going to get through, so... Overall length is 9.875 inches, so almost 10 inches long overall length. The blade length is 4.625 inches, so almost 4.65. The cutting edge is 4.4. Uh, it is in 154 cm steel as opposed to the 1095 USA made. Um, it's 0 0.19 inches thick which is just about a perfect thickness for me for a survival or bushcraft knife. I think, you know, to get the, the, the ultimately the, the best tip strength and the overall resi wear, you know, you know uh, uh, the overall resistance of breaking a tip or cracking this knife in half if it gets stuck in something kind of situations. And it has enough weight behind it to chop, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, it's a drop point 58 on the RC scale, and the the blade grind on this, it's got a gray finish, by the way, which is kind of weird, because you'd think it'd have black to go with the handle, but it looks amazing to me. Uh, the, the grind on this knife is just about perfect. It is, I mean perfect, it is one of, one of the better... Um, one of the better Scandivex grinds that I've ever had. Um, you know, I love a good Scandi. I love Scandi grinds, which are, are coming from here straight down to the point at, and meet at the blade edge there. But this is kind of bowed out, you know, like an apple seed. Um, it, it, it gives it a lot more thickness behind the edge and a lot more toughness. And, you know, let's be honest, if you're slicing the bark off of a stick to be like like for example when you're running that blade across and trying to keep that motion and keep that exact depth on either side to clear the the bark off of something you know the grab and the control you have with a convex edge is second to none and they're also really really great for no chips and rolls compared to a hollow grind um, so it's a scandivex uh, which is, you know, a convex from here down, so it appears to be Scandi, but, but has a convex bowing outwards till it meets at the point. 
and I freaking love it. Um, this this knife took me com completely by surprise. The last few Topps knives that I had, I didn't use much. I kind of bought them and did a quick review and, and, and then kind of moved on to some other things I thought were better. Um, this has got some weight to it. And that's, again, due to the stock. It's not that long, but it's... Uh, 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 9.73 ounces so 9.73 ounces is in my opinion just about perfect because you know I can I can hold back and I'll get a lanyard on it sorry I'm bleeding a little bit uh, I, I'll get a lanyard on it so I can really do some chopping tasks and hold hold in the back there but the cutting power on this knife that you have right from here to here is just spec and you know when I'm carving I don't have to keep it down here and try to try to hold that you know the more sharp nice and flat part where I can keep it nice and sharp on my strop that that belly is so powerful to kind of hold here and and do some notching and whatever I'm doing for temp pegs and you know this knife has blown me away the handle is black and red G10. The handle thickness is 0.64 inches at its thickest. Uh, so, you know, I, I I can't even explain to you guys how much I'm blown away by this knife. The handle geometry seemed a little funny when I saw it. It was real square like a Rat 7 or like the SEs used to be. Uh, it, you know, it has the bow drill divots uh, um, and some cutouts on the front here on either side. So you can, you know, get a pinch grab on there, uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, but this handle is almost perfect. And the jimping is aggressive, okay? So the jimping's a little aggressive, right? Which, I gotta be honest, I don't like aggressive jimping. But for this knife, I will make an exception because the control it gives you on on a medium hard grab is so crazy I, I just I, I can't I can't get over how much I love that belly because it's almost a little bit thicker here than it is here and it gives you that just that perfect belly for carving now when I tell you guys that you know it seems strange the handles thin here and then kind of bows out and continues to bow out and then comes in a little here and then bows out again to this thick big pommel it does have a, a ferro rod uh, notch back here for striking at a 45 degree right there and a lot of people get this wrong so real quick the sheath you guys know I like a good positive click great retention you know you can pull it straight out but great retention now if that doesn't make a noise then l listen to how perfect this is not one sound, not one rattle. It's only rattling because that. Not one single rattling noise. Now the clip, good retention on the clip. It's a, it's a, you know, a thin metal clip. It's actually a little sharp to be honest. So I might take that off and put a different 360 clip on there. This one, I, I got a Reef Knives F4 Bushcrafter that I did a review on recently if you guys want to check it out but the 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 360 swivel belt loop on it was was kind of plasticky and and it it was really easy to turn this one is super hard to turn so it'll hold that form if you have it like this on a pouch or or have it just just a vertical you know and there's a little plastic plug in the hole to get back to that screw so you can take it off but like, you know, and I suggest also putting a paracord loop or paracord uh, little braid on that fire steel because it's really hard to get that fire steel out. Look at this ferro rod, man. I, I mean, this ferro rod is, it, it might not appear to be, but it's a lot thicker. This is a quarter incher compared to the 3 16 or the smaller versions of it. Um, I, you know, I don't, I, it's kind of hard to tell on video always. You know, in my hands looking at it, it looks like one of the thin guys. Really, really nice aluminum uh, kind of three jimping little grab handle there. I gave it a couple test runs the other day. You know, this knife is really great. And uh, the back spine, 
I think if I rub some of that coating off, I think it would take a fire steel, but it doesn't very well right now. That's kind of what this end is for. And I see guys kind of flicking this end this way, which this knife was actually made uh, how they, they used to make a German knife that I had like this. And again, great retention on the sheath. I, I mean, A1, you know, it's a, it's a uh, taco style as opposed to pancake. But back to the fire steel, this is made to be ran at a 45 degree angle, maybe a little steeper, just like this. And, and if you feel that tip there, if you go like that and stick your finger in it, there is really aggressive edge at the top here. So in my opinion, which I've, I did and it worked successfully, I, I kind of hit it and ran it straight down really hard and it, it th threw really great sparks. Also, I think it's for putting the knife like this and pulling the fire steel out, which is why I suggest the loop. I'm going to give that a little further testing this week and get back to you guys so I can really tell you my thoughts on it. Um, but fire steel aside, I have a lot of scrapers with a lot of my fire steels, and I usually keep a scraper right in my, my coin pocket in my jeans on the inside the right pocket. So there's not a lot of knives that I will discredit. You guys know I love lion steels, and lion steels don't have, they have a rounded spine. So it's not a make or break for me. But, you know, I, I just can't, and I haven't tested out the bow, drip, bow divots yet for, uh, you know, bow drills on a fire. But I just cannot get over my sheer surprise and my love for this knife. I don't think I've taken it off in the five days since it's got here. I really don't. Um, like I said, my birthday was over the weekend. And I actually was able to get in touch and in contact with the guys over at Survive Knives told them about the channel and they are sending me two knives uh one i custom built and ordered it's going to be here in about a month and then another that's coming a little sooner it's coming in it's coming in this week and i'm really excited uh to show you guys it's it's the uh gso 5.1 you know if you guys haven't got a chance to check out survive knives i'll put a link in the description i know this is a knife review for the tops bob bush Fieldcraft, but I wanted to throw that in there that I got a lot of great videos planned this week for you guys and this month, and uh, you know I'm, sh I'm I'm able to get out in the field this weekend and and the following weekend and the next over the whole rest of the summer on the weekends to get some really good footage of hard using some of these knives. But when I tell you that I, I I've had a lot of custom made knives in my life. When it comes to survival knives and bushcraft knives, this is as close, and and this is a a very a very uh, uh, direct statement, and I think some people are going to have an issue with it that might not like this knife. In my opinion, the build quality, the fit and finish, the overall end product of the Fieldcraft by Tops, in my opinion, as a as an avid knife owner and knife user. This is one of the knives, production knives, that is very close to the quality and that nice, heavy, thick build and fit and finish that you'll get on a custom knife, man. This feels like a custom, made-for-my-hand bushcraft knife. I have meaty hands, but I'm telling you, this, this is one of the best using knives I've ever had, and I could not be more happy with it. You know, everybody and their mother at some point, if they have a channel, an outdoor channel, has talked about the Tops Bob. And this is the full size, the uh, the 10-inch, the you know, 9.875 and 4.625 blade. Uh, but they have a 3.5. So now they have a Tops Bob Fieldcraft in a 3.5, which is a 3.5-inch blade as opposed to a 4.625 blade. Uh, you know, three and a half inches. So they have a smaller, kind of like EDC version of this knife. And I'm going to get one and check it out, man. Because I'm telling you, the the power that you have on this knife for... Sorry, that my computer light shut off. 
The power that you have with this blade and the thick stock and the ability of, of you know, this handle is so versatile. You can come the whole way back here and throw your pinky on that spine sticking out and really get some good um, swing power on it because it's heavy. I, I just can't tell you guys how, how appropriate everything on this knife is. And yeah, the fire steel thing is a little funny and maybe they had a good idea starting out and it didn't work that way and maybe I just have to practice, practice, practice using it that way because I wouldn't have gotten good at, you know, bow, bow, uh, uh, bow drilling fires. I wouldn't have gotten good at carving unless I did so. And, you know, maybe that's one of those cool skills I could, I could uh, obtain based off of just having this knife with that 45 degree fire steel thing in the back there, fire striker. So real quick, last statement, the jimping is aggressive. And I don't know if I like aggressive on a lot of my other knives, but this one, it is completely fine, get a lot of control. And also with this really long handle, this handle is, um, 5.125 man they love their 0 0.025 <laughs> inch measurements 5.125 inch handle so you can really afford if you don't like that jimping to then either this is actually a, a half of a finger choil and there's I, I have the same thing on my AD10 so if you really want to choke up and you're careful you can, and, and as long as you're pulling this direction, like this direction, you can choke up on that and put your thumb up high. That's You're more than able to do that without cutting yourself if you're careful and you know what you're doing. And you get locked in nicely before you start. So you can either move up a little higher than the jimping if you don't like it, because most of the time it just bothers me right on the, right on that tip of my thumb. Or you can, because this handle's nice and long, you can move back before the jimping and still get a really great grab in there. So all in all, I could not say enough positive stuff about this knife. I could probably sit here for another 10 minutes, which I'm sure a lot of you do not want to hear anyway. But again, the quality of the Kydex, great drainage. You know, the clip's okay. I haven't had any issues with it. I like it a lot better than the Reef Knives clip. But it's very sharp on either side, really. I mean, to, to turn it even, it's sharp, man. It's very sharp. So I, I, I think I'm either going to kind of cap that or try to buff the edges out a little bit. But, you know, all in all, I it's a little bit heavy, I'd say. But, but I, I can't complain. Now I'm just nitpicking for the sake of not just blowing smoke about this knife man i i love it i love everything about it fit and finish was fantastic sheath is fantastic so you guys know i love the guys over at blade hq and i trust the products that they sell you can get this knife anywhere in 1095 but i promise you it is worth paying the extra 20 or 30 dollars for the uh 154 cm I think it's a better steel. Tor knives, for example, that you know they make really good knives, and they they love it. 154 cm is used by uh, Benchmade a lot for some of their more hard use stuff. So uh, on Blade HQ right now, these are going for 199 dollars. So after taxes, like 207. I paid 207 um, and got the free shipping from Blade HQ for this knife. Um, you know, this is, they, they come in, the, the the 1095s come in all different colors, but I would suggest the 154 CMs. They are in limited colors. There's one that's a gray, gray and black G10 handle with gray coating on the blade. Then there's this one, which is actually red with red liners. I really, I, I didn't think I was going to like the color that much, but I love it. So this is the red G10 and red liners with a gray coating uh, back on the hilt as well. And then they have a gray and black G10 with the gray. And then they have an all black handle, G10 handle with the gray uh, coating. So it's limited colors, but if you want a knife based off of what it's going to do and not how pretty it looks, this is the, the one of the best damn knives I've ever had, and in my opinion, is very close to what a custom 
uh, a custom ability um, field craft knife would be, man. It's just excellent. So again, you know, a lot of crazy stuff going on outside in the world. So guys, this week be safe. You know, um, try to have a really good week this week. I had an amazing birthday. Got a lot of great feedback, and I'm excited to, for the videos coming up. So you guys have a great week. Stay safe and always stay heavy. Thank you.